Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Will Nietzsche, who's the founder of IQ Bar. Will, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So I love, um, I always, I kind of say this when I first start off, um, I don't research the companies or the guest and I kind of want to go with the flow, but when I hear a company name or I hear, you know, kind of their, their title, I always like to go, Ooh, that makes me think of, and IQ bar that kind of says it all. So I'm, I'm excited to hear from you on what your product is and your, and your, uh, a solution to the world that you discovered, but get us a little bit of a background on you. What's your story and your entrepreneurial journey to this point in your career? Sure. Yeah. So I live in Boston. I went to college here. I took my first job out of college here in software. I was selling B2B SaaS, uh, operations and supply chain, solutions to energy companies, predominantly oil and gas companies. So I was flying mm-hmm. back and forth to Houston um, a ton. Didn't didn't like it. I uh, wasn't passionate about software or oil and gas. <laughs> uh, became obsessed with nutrition at that time in my life for personal reasons. Um, and then that got me into... I also always wanted to start my own thing and wanted to be able to own from tip to tail the creation of that thing. Um, which I could do in, in consumer goods. So all of that sort of rolled up into this scenario where I wanted to start a, a brain food company. Um, so yeah, so I've been doing that, started that in my apartment in Boston in 2018, been a roller coaster ride ever since. And that's a little bit of background on me. So that's, um, when you think about, you know, I want to start a brain food or brain bar company, that's pretty specific. What was it that made you recognize that you wanted to do that? Because this has become like a crusade or a mission, you know, not just I make widgets and I want to sell them at a profit. Yeah. So I got really into the brain, how it functions, how it fails, how it, how to optimize it. And even at down to the physiological level in college. So I uh, studied psychology and then I took a bunch of neuroscience classes. And so just was fascinated with the brain. And I was also really interested in business and startups in particular. And so I wanted to, I couldn't really figure out a way to work in the intersection of those two things, <clears throat> but I just knew I was really interested in, in the brain. And so I took the job in software sort of by default. Um, and but all all the while in my free time, I would read up on psycho you know psychology related books and studies and things like that. And coincidentally, my I started having failings in my own brain because I was getting headaches and I had mental fog on a daily basis and felt lethargic and, and all that. And so, um, like I said, I got really into nutrition. Why I got into nutrition was. That, those reasons it was as a means to resolve feeling like crap every day yeah um and then so anyway all of that just sort of like aggregated and it didn't hurt that i was not a fan of my job it's always good to have a have an impetus of what you don't want to do um or if i do this thing i can shift into something I'm more passionate about. So it was kind of like five, six, seven forces all hitting me at once. Hmm. But, um, but yeah, it really came down to a personal interest and personal yeah. experience. So why choose a bar? Why not powder or pills? If, if your formulation does what it does, why not um, just do a different you know medium? Why was the bar attractive to you? Yeah, I don't like pills and I don't I don't think anyone likes pills. Um so it's just not I would rather do something I I like and that other people like. I think, you know, supplements are a thing and people take them and all that. I just to me it's less interesting and inspiring and um it's less like relatable and enjoyable. Um if you 
yeah sampling pills isn't really a thing you know uh whereas like you can see yourself at a table at a whole foods handing out a bar so um i just like the concept of eating nutrition more than purely consuming it and food as medicine or food as functional nutrition uh why a bar i mean there was a whole series of criteria you know i wanted to play in a space that was really big even if it was really competitive so you know multi-billion dollar market and my goal was uh, i don't want to have to generate or manufacture demand i just want to outperform others to seize pre-existing demand so the bar market is, is a huge market in food and beverage and then now, like, I, I was thinking about your reasoning with the bar and the pills it's almost like having an experience you know like if you take a pill it's like down and gone whereas you're actually touching a bar you're actually seeing it you're actually chewing it you're smelling it so i think that's a a, a factor you know the experience economy kind of a um, approach as well oh totally and it is an experience um and there's a flavor to it and the flavor reminds you of some other thing you ate it so yeah it's a, it's a it's an experience it's a good way of putting it um so yeah where was i going for that <laughs> um what, what was the question you asked right before that oh kind of uh you know why you chose the bar over pills and oh and, yeah uh... so so a bar so huge market right um but also you know that let's say you I'll, I'll tell you exactly how i created the product so i looked at what are the compounds that have a wealth of research showing they're good for your brain and so let's say it's like omega-3s flavonoids uh, medium chain triglycerides there's a whole list and then here's all the research that showed that it's good for you you know if you know a cohort of people who consume this saw these results um and then i looked at okay what are the whole food in, you know ingredients that are richest in those so like for vitamin e that would be something like almonds sunflower seeds etc for flavonoids that would be cacao chocolate um, matcha blueberries in the fruit category etc so just cataloging like all of that and then and then looking at it and saying okay can i make a product out of this and what product would that be and there's not that many products where you mash a bunch of stuff up together and like that's the product a bar right. is one of them you know um you can't really make a brain food chip for example you yeah it's a, just a chip you know it's gonna be some flour and some oil and whatever so it's just there's just not that many form factors so big market check does this make sense if i want to mash all this stuff up together check and um and yeah that's kind of as simple as that and and at this point you're what five years in approximately and you've made a buck or two so you've you've seen velocity and momentum and definitely proof proof of concept times a thousand so looking back at just even the short period of time what were some of the you know hurdles that you experienced that you didn't expect and then how did you get past that to get to this point and then of course obviously you're looking to the next pinnacle the next uh, you know summit that kind of thing yeah i mean there's infinite hurdles I, like there's personal hurdles right you this is like if you look at it from a first principle standpoint like you you have to get your personal life in order yeah to withstand what's going to happen to you professionally if you embark on an entrepreneurial journey for me the timing was good you know i was 25 i didn't have kids didn't have dependents wasn't paying down a bullet of debt you know, had really low, I lived an inexpensive lifestyle. Like the timing was great. So I could withstand, I was confident I could work an insane number of hours um, and, you know, make a bunch of sacrifices that needed that are requisite sacrifices. So, but even with all that, many of the challenges are, are just avoiding burnout, you know, um, personally, but more specific to the business, um, you know, making stuff's hard. Stuff goes, with stuff going wrong isn't an if, it's a when and how. Yep. And a lot of stuff is out of your control. You know, you have partners that 
makes the thing you want to make and you have other partners that fulfill it and put it in a box and send it out. And then you have other partners who put it on shelves and, you know, the ecosystem of variables is so wide and vast that stuff just is going to go wrong and is going to go wrong fairly frequently. And so um, it's just sort of like, what's, it's like <laughs> your job is just to put out fires constantly and keep the machine moving forward. Um, that could be anything from, I mean, we had a wrappers not seal on a 200,000 bar order with CVS and we had to mm. find a new wrapper supplier in a week's time. Like that's one flavor of challenge. Then there's like the higher level flavor of challenge, which is like, how do you build a team? You don't have yeah. a lot of money. How do you build a team with not that much money and motivate the team? And then when you double and then double again, well, is that team the right team for, for your business now that it's four times bigger than it was when you started? Um, no, often. Sometimes yes, often no. So the team hiring, motivating, retaining, the human element of startups to me is the hardest of, of all challenges. Um, yeah. Yeah, I could I could go on because like but. it or not, it takes infrastructure, team, um, thought leaderships, and and team isn't just the people, you know, turning the nuts and bolts on the assembly line, so to speak, uh, or you know, putting the you know packaging on the boxes. The team should be your brain trust, and people going, where sh are we going to go next? And yeah, the team might be great at this level, but once you double, now is that the right team for? Can they handle that increase? And if not, how can I quickly find people to then fold into my current team to come with us, help us go to the next level? So, are you are you guys um, in manufacturing here in the U.S.? Yes, we, we manufacture That's awesome. in the Midwest. That's really good because you, you only hear like on the shark tanks, you know, like, oh, hey, we want to save a buck or two and let's go to wherever overseas to manufacture. But then now there could be supply chain issues. So you probably have uh, avoided some supply chain issues by manufacturing in the U.S. Yes, although we, we there's certain ingredients that just like are imported, like pea protein, for example, peas are not really grown all that much in the US or in Canada. So there are just certain inputs where you're just, and, and, you know, you have so many, I mean, the last couple of years has been one of the most challenging supply chain environments of, of the last hundred years um, because of COVID and then labor shortages and then yada, 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 you know, the Ukraine war, it's been wild. Yeah. And so even stuff you're sourcing domestically is, incredibly tough because we still import so many variables even stuff that's made here let's say wrappers are still importing elements themselves so your suppliers have suppliers yeah so your suppliers have supply chains too like the supply chain is so vast um when you really go down to like the raw elements going into anything so it's just it's a lot to manage we've gotten a lot better at it um, we've learned the hard way in many cases, but, um, um, when you said your suppliers have suppliers it made me think of something that I literally read in a book last night. Um, and then it was, uh, reiterated in an email on a, uh, influencer that I follow in marketing talking about, don't mention features and benefits. Talk about the benefits. Yeah, we get that. But Talk about the benefit of the benefits and it kind of like goes deeper. So let's, let's kind of use that as the test. So what's the benefit of the IQ bar slash brain food? Yeah. I want to hear that, but what's the benefit of that? What are, what are, what are your users ultimately want that they're now seeing and getting in your bar? I mean, I, I think it's, there's two sides of the coin. So it's a, maybe a little bit counterintuitive, but a lot of the battle is avoiding things, eliminating bad things versus advancing good things. So, for example, the standard American diet, you know, most people eat a lot of carbs mm -hmm. and empty carbs, which turn into blood sugar, which spikes your, you know, causes you to gain weight, which isn't healthy for a variety of reasons, but also just in the short term spikes your blood sugar 
and then your blood sugar plummets and then you crash and that's why you feel so lethargic at 2 p.m so by creating something that's filling and is you know hits that snack or breakfast occasion and avoiding that crash because you eliminate or uh, exclude let's say um high glycemic carbs meaning like not fibrous carbs that's half the battle um the other half of the battle is putting forth things that are good so including in that serving omega-3s and flavonoids and all these things that are anti-inflammatory they literally some literally help you grow new neurons um etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's kind of two sides of that coin um and you know you really notice the difference but if you if you eat a pizza you will you will feel terrible in in two hours and if you eat our bar you won't so oftentimes the elimination piece is the the most powerful yeah you know it's it's interesting people want to go away from certain things and run toward certain things and your bar provides a little bit of both totally totally Neat. Well, I tell you, um, you've you've really covered a whole lot of ground here on why you started your mission, your crusade, what your your uh, uh, business uh, accomplishes that, and kind of some of the counterintuitive things. If someone is uh, interested in learning more about your ingredients and how it can help them feel better and pick up some of your bars, what's the best way they can learn more and then buy a box? Yeah, eatiqbar.com. E-A-T-I-Q-B-A-R.com is our website. And then we're on Amazon. We're pretty big on Amazon. If, you, if you're interested in getting a box, please leave a review. Um, we're in about 8,000 stores. You can find our a store near you on our website. We're in Walmart, Kroger, Wegmans, Sprouts, et cetera. Um, what else? At Eat IQ Bar dot, or at Eat IQ Bar is our social handle on all, all social medias. But yeah, website, I think, is, is probably the best spot to learn more. Awesome. Well, Will, thank you so much for coming on today. It was a real pleasure talking with you. Thanks for having me. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.